What's up, everyone? Um, I apologise, firstly, for the uh, bad audio and the fact that I'm having to film this thing on my phone. Uh, Mark is away currently. He is in, I think he's in Turkey, uh, probably being chased by some sort of militia. So whilst he does that, I'm going to watch the SpaceX um, live stream for this interplanetary collodial transport announcement. In this sort of hold music, um, as we wait for this, the stream to start, it seems to be taking a while, it seems to be a bit later than they were anticipating. I'm pretty sure it's playing a remixed version of the Jamie XX tune Gosh, um, which is slightly significant for one reason. One, it's a, a, an album I really like and a, and a song I like, but uh, more importantly, go watch the Jamie XX um, Gosh music video, because it's all about Mars. It's kind of a, a look at Mars in the distant future being colonised. It's pretty cool. So it's cool to hear it as we build up to the uh, as we build up to the announcement. Oh, oh, we're starting. We're starting. Just finished watching the stream. I mean, there's there's so much, so much to unpack. Um, like this is going to be a, you know, we're going to need to do a full off world off topic uh, episode on this. It's going to be a long, at least a two hour long one, uh, maybe two episodes. Uh, we'll do that as soon as we can. But for now, I'm just going to give you kind of my overall reactions to having just watched the stream just just the, the talk having just finished uh, I mean we knew it was going to be you know pretty pretty extraordinary um, I still don't think I was quite prepared for exactly the the sort of the ambition involved in this um, uh, okay so it's I mean, I'm, I'm almost a little bit speechless. So if we if we start with the uh, the rocket itself, I mean, it's absolutely massive, huge, huge, huge thing. If we look at it in comparison to the Saturn V, I mean, it's 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 a bit taller and uh, a heck of a lot wider. Um, but the, the the power of it, I mean, Jesus, it look it's uh, if, you, if we look at the the what the Saturn V could deliver to low Earth orbit, uh, that was about 140. Um, thousand kilograms to Earth orbit. This thing can deliver five hundred and fifty thousand kilograms. It's it's absolutely insanely powerful. Four hundred and fifty tons to the surface of Mars. They reckon. That's that's ridiculous, but just a massive, massive, massive thing. Um, the spaceship itself can go into orbit apparently. 
if you strip out, so if you you know that if you take off the booster stage um, and you have just the spaceship itself, that thing can fly into orbit. As if you strip out the interior, uh, you know some of the some of the sort of non-essential parts. Um, so I mean that thing's hugely powerful anyway. And so so essentially what the architecture looks like it is consists of is you have this 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 booster that takes things out. The booster lands. Um, as you would expect from a SpaceX uh, booster, it lands back down, and then they had some sort of like crane demonstration where the, that crane thing swings around, and puts on another you know spacecraft, and that goes off. Um, then, so so the booster delivers this um, this spaceship into into orbit. Then it goes and refuels at uh, some particular um, orbiting refueling stations. The orbiters are basically uh, the, sorry, the refueling uh, vehicles are basically the same vehicle as the spaceship, but uh, modified in a way that they just carry fuel as opposed to passengers and other cargo necessities. And then that thing heads off to Mars. The 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 spaceship itself, um, I mean, it's got like huge, huge windows on the front. It looked like there was a lot of space inside. We didn't get a huge amount of detail really on on the interior. Um, we we got sort of a, a kind of vague overview of how big it sort of looks. Like it might be, Elon talked about uh, maybe there's some restaurants, um, zero gravity games, all these types of things might be included into it. Um, it looked like to me, and you know, it's obviously huge, but 100 people in there for a few months is going to be pretty, uh, a bit gnarly, a bit, won't be the most pleasant. It will be, I mean, it'll be fun, it'll be an amazing journey, but um, it will still be fairly tight, I think. Uh, we didn't get any details either on the habitats. So, um, if we think about, we go to the. This was more about the architecture, really, to transport people forward and backwards, as opposed to um, land people on the, uh, as opposed to keep them on the planet. So we didn't get any details of uh, long-term sort of colony structures or or plans to build um, structures on Mars. It was all about the the transport, uh, essentially, really. Um, on the base of the rocket. Uh, we had the Raptor engines, 42 of them. And another, I mean, they, they, you know, a lot of space, most of SpaceX rockets have this um, mentality that lots of smaller engines is better because you have a lot more redundancy built in. This has 42 uh, of these Raptor engines, which are actually the same size as the Merlin engines, basically. I mean, I didn't realize that they were going to be the same size as the Merlin engines. Um, methane burning, as, uh, you know, was discussed before. The, it looks like the center core is, is going to be gimbaled so it can change the direction of the thrust, whereas the outer ring of engines is, is not gimbaled. Um, so, uh, and they sh actually showed a test of the Raptor engines working, which was really cool to see that progress already. And we had, um, I think there was some stuff out in the press maybe last week showing a, a, an image of one of those engines uh, firing. It looks like also they've managed to build a prototype of the liquid oxygen tank, which is apparently one of the really difficult parts of the uh, rocket to build, which is made of carbon fiber and it's very difficult to stop it leaking, but it has to be made of that to keep it light and strong and for various other reasons. Absolutely massive. You'll see pictures of it all over in the news, um, you know, from inside it, from the outside, a huge structure. Uh, I, I can't, it's great. I can't believe someone's, that a company is is attempting to do this sort of in my lifetime, you know. The, the, the space race was, the space race was dead, and space exploration was just kind of on the, on the wane really, and now there's a company with the building this incredible architecture that's not just going to take people to Mars, but the, the idea is to take everyone, you know, into the greater solar system to open the whole thing up to everyone. I mean, we'll see if they do. It. I mean, the the, the cost of it monumental obviously um they said uh 10 billion they think uh, to get get it to a stage where it can fly back and forth to mars a massive amount of money uh spaces are going to have to they, they talked about potential funding streams um including government funding and uh, private industry funding i mean spacex the company is obviously going to have to try and come up with some other ways to get cash flow um their current activities, obviously, they're doing very well, but uh, we didn't hear any mention of the um, satellite internet that Elon Musk had talked about before, so maybe they're not thinking of doing that anymore. 
but there's going to have to be some innovations in terms of, of just profit making to keep this thing afloat. Uh, the timeline, I think Elon said about 10 years uh, until they fly the first one to Mars. Now, he did say that, you can take that with a, uh, a, a pinch of salt because he, he knows he's not great at keeping up those timelines and they always tend to be slightly too ambitious. Um, but, you know, I, I, apart from, I would suspect that that timeline gets stretched out further than, than they think it will. Um, at the cost of it, uh, what did he say? Oh yeah, about 100, he said 100, the, the, their estimate was once it comes down after um, a period of time where it's going to be more expensive than the start, obviously. I reckon $140,000 for someone to go to Mars. That's nothing. Well, I mean, I can't afford it, but that's crazy cheap. Crazy, crazy cheap. He said down to potentially lower than $100,000 um, as they, as they you know, iterate on this, this, this architecture. Um, the... I'm, I will, I mean, we'll see how it goes. I'm, I'm still, I'm still a bit all over the place. I, I can't really, I can't believe that how how awesome this is. It's just ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. It's, it's so, so ambitious. I mean, make no mistake about it. This is a significant engineering project, like to 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 the likes of which we've maybe never really seen before. Um, it's incredibly ambitious. You know, it does have a chance of failing, uh, but. Man, what time to be alive, eh? I guess. Um, I guess we'll see how it un unfolds. Maybe we'll get some more information on uh, various other aspects of the of the craft. I mean, hopefully they release some sort of white paper or or something about it. Just you know, maybe not detailing all the technical um, parts of it. I don't know how open they'll be with that. Um, from a competitive sense, because they do have competitors in the space industry that will be looking to use their technology. So maybe it will be kind of a sort of spec outline, you know, as opposed to a, a full white paper or, or anything like that. Um, but we should, we should get some more information um, in the coming days uh, from SpaceX. Obviously, I encourage you all to go and, and watch uh, the talk and watch... Um, there's an also a shorter video, I think, an animation of uh, the the architecture basically functioning, um, including all the all the designs they've used in it are not just random CGI. They're all apparently based on the CAD designs that they've 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 been working with and are and have come up with for the architecture. So uh, representing, I guess, therefore, an, some sort of accurate portrayal of what it should look like uh, when it's done. I mean, you, you you wonder about all the different implications of this for um, the space industry, for for the future of humanity, for everything. I mean, I wonder if they use this rocket, use this rocket for other, not just getting to Mars, but for any other. I wonder if it's economical for any other uh, use types. Um, they did mention that the spaceship uh, part could be used as some sort of crazy fast transport system to move cargo around uh, the Earth you know, in, in sort of like 25 minutes from New York to Tokyo. I can't remember exactly what he said, but yeah, really fast. And have to land out at sea uh, because of the noise it would make. But potentially, you know, a really interesting maybe use, use case for it. Um, and he said, you know, as we as we go out into the solar system, as, as we have this network implemented that they're looking at uh, developing, we'll begin to develop space technology much more quickly because we then have a necessity to do it. We have that architecture. People are out there and suddenly it becomes, there's a forcing function, as he said, to, to try and optimise that and make it better and better. Um, so the further we go into that, the, the, the more capable we are going to be of improving our ability to go and, you know, become a truly space-faring civilization. So really, really incredible stuff. Um, just... We'll do we'll do more on this uh, at some point soon um, because there's a heck of a lot to go through. Uh, but yeah, awesome, awesome.